Hi, my name is Carla and welcome to my plant channel, Chlorophyll is the New Black. For whoever is new, this plant channel talks about plant care and plant projects, but it's not a secret that orchids are my passion. So I am joining a care collab. And who doesn't know what the care collabs are, these are many an initiative that Nina from Ninja Orchids is organizing and she asked several growers that have the same orchid to do a video and tell you how they basically grow this orchid in their conditions and with their specific set. So, going into this, well, this is an orchid that is native from Mexico. And it is a little bit funny to say, I mean, I don't know, probably you don't have the same, it's just something weird, maybe about me or so. But since this orchid is from Mexico, I feel about proud about it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just love that I can bring a piece of Mexico with me. Of course, I didn't buy this one in Mexico. I live in the Netherlands now and I bought it from an authorized grower. But I mean, still, it is native from there and uh, somehow makes a link to my heart. And also the other thing is that this orchid is a very, very, very easy grower. So I would fully, fully recommend it. It flowers a, a couple of times a year and actually it holds with the blooms for a long time. So I think it's quite a rewarding orchid. But then let's go into the care now. <laughs> First of all, I would like to also let you know which channels are also participating. So they will be shown now on the screen and there will be links for those channels in the description below so that you can also check out how they take care of this beautiful orchid. Now let's think about the name of this orchid. So it's called Maxillaria variabilis. And apparently the variabilis is uh, related to the fact that it can come in different colors. It can come from yellow, like you can see now, all the way to dark red. And I have mostly seen the yellow variant and that's exactly what I have. And also uh, going a little bit more to the type of, of orchid that is called actually Maxillaria. Apparently what I have heard as well is that this is related to the shape of the flower and that is because the lip of the flower moves a little bit like if it would be kind of a, a tongue with a, with a mouth, like the lower part of the mouth that is like the maxillar. So if you can see this, the flower, you can see how it actually moves, like if it would talk. <laughs> I found that super, super funny. Anyway, flowers are pretty small. I mean, if you compare... You can see here size against just a pen so they are a little bit more than one centimeter across they can be one to two centimeters as i mentioned before they can be yellow to red and uh, if we look at how the plant looks well this basically uh, it's a plant that has many pseudobulbs that are this type of uh, structures that it has here and the funny thing is that these uh, round shaped soda bulbs, they grow on top of each other. So they have a very, very funny uh, way of growing, as you can see here. So from one, from the edge of one, the next one grows. And at some point, they actually become pendant. So I think that this type of plants actually look pretty, pretty fun. Also, uh, the soda bulbs at the end have one leaf. And it looks a little bit grassy, so thin and very, very beautiful. And now if we talk about light, these plants normally like bright light. Many people can have said that they have grown them like directly on the sun, under the sun. And this can be done if you acclimate your orchid, but apparently they also stress a little bit. So the best condition that you can grow them in is bright light, but not direct sun but it apparently can withstand direction. Now, uh, if we talk about humidity, mine doesn't fuss at all. Here in the Netherlands in the winter, we have about 40% yeah, humidity inside of the apartment that I grow this orchid in, and it has not fuss at all, as long as you keep it hydrated. 
Uh, this plant doesn't take a uh, per se kind of a um, winter rest or anything like that. It just grows continuously. Just take into account that if it's getting cooler, then probably in less light, then probably your orchid will need less water and, uh, and less fertilizer. But this plant, I just water it and fertilize it all around the year, more in the growing season. Now, temperature wise, this is a warm to cool grower. In my case, I grow it uh, in a range of temperatures between 20 centigrades to maybe 25 centigrades. So it's a very, like, let's say, template to warm temperature range. So it, it's actually growing very well and hasn't fussed at all. I actually got this specimen two years ago and it was very small. I got it from a terrarium shop <laughs> and it was like a few pseudopods and now it has, yeah, it's four times as big as when I actually got it. So I'm actually pretty happy about this orchid. It's just growing very, very easily and it hasn't fussed at all about anything. If we look at the root system, you can see that like it's plenty. It has grown roots so, so, so much. You can see them all around the pot, covering completely the pot. And uh, my potting media of preference is actually bark with a little bit of sphagnum. And I put a little bit of expanded clay in the bottom so that the extra water drains a little bit faster. And then I can basically throw that extra water away. About watering, uh, to be honest, I water it kind of once a week. I, according to my medium and how I dosify the sphagnum and the conditions that I have, I actually know more or less uh, when I need to water it. Uh, so I try to adapt the medium to my routine that is once a week. But you can water this orchid when you see and feel that the medium is approaching dryness. It can dry out, but it doesn't like to dry out too much. If you leave it too long without water, you will see that the pseudobulbs will start to shrink and you will start to see them wrinkly. And I have a <laughs> an example of this with my other maxillaria tenifolia, what is called the coconut orchid, and I'll show you in a second. Well, this is the maxillaria tenifolia that I was talking about. This one I have in my kitchen in a southwest facing window. And as you can see, it becomes pendant at some point. It has the same uh, kind of uh, way of growing. growing. Like you have one set of bulb here and then the next one emerge from, from the side of that one and so on. And this one as well uh, looks very grassy from the leaves. It has one leaf per set of bulb. And something else that I wanted to show you is that this orchid loves its water. When I haven't watered it, then the soda bulb became pretty, pretty wrinkly. I don't know if you can see because it's against light. But uh, this one, for example, got pretty, pretty wrinkly. And it never went fully back. Like, it just kept being, uh, this one as well, a little bit wrinkly, even though now it's hydrated. So that, of course, told me that I was underwatering my orchid and I needed to catch up. So I try to keep this one, especially that is very thirsty, in a self-watering pot. Uh, so I can see here when it needs more water and I just put more water in it. But I think it's a beautiful plant and a beautiful touch for my kitchen. <laughs> When the orchid gets dehydrated at some point, uh, those wrinkles won't go, away, won't go away and that's irreversible. But this orchid, I have maintained it well hydrated and you can see all around that the soda bulbs are very plump. And for example, you can see here a new growth popping out from this soda bulb here. And uh, something that I haven't showed you is actually from where the flowers grow and also from where the soda bulbs grow. So let me find a good example. So here you can see how uh, you have a soda bulb and then from the edge you have the flower spike. Well, the soda bulb grows in a very similar way. So let me see. 
Oh, here, for example, um, yeah, many flowers are already dried because it's uh, been in flower for two months now. <laughs> but uh, you can see, I can take the, the dry flowers away. You can see that uh, from the side, for example, this edible put two flower spikes. And then you can see here, if I peel a little bit, that the new growth is starting there. You see, it's this, this pointy thing here. So then, that's where it will continue to grow. And let me see what I have. Another example, but yeah, we can actually see maybe more clear from here. You can see that this is kind of the bottom soda bulb and this new soda bulb grew from the side. So that's how they kind of pile up like this in a, in a row, connected by the rhizome. And then at some point they may become pendant as the tenefolia as you saw as well. Well, I love this orchid. It's just so beautiful. Also, the scent, I haven't actually perceived it, but many people say that it... Uh, basically smells a little bit spicy uh, but yeah I also have it a little bit yeah in a bottom of a shelf so sometimes I don't take it to smell it and enjoy it as much as I should and uh, best wise I <laughs> I wanted to say that I haven't had any issue because this orchid has survived so much like has not fussed at all and and basically survive my trip infestation, which uh, many orchids didn't, and they are still fighting it. But now that I actually grabbed it, I found mealybugs. So they're starting to colonize my beautiful orchid, so I really need to take care of that. Actually, you can probably see a little bit here. So apparently they might be a little bit susceptible to mealybugs. You can see there, that white thing there. Yeah, it's residual stuff from millibox so i really need to treat it before it becomes untreatable <laughs> or well way more difficult to treat and um, yeah of course the millibox love to hide in between the sheets the dry sheets there and that will be also a challenge to try to make them disappear so i think i will treat it with some alcohol and clean it thoroughly and keep an eye on it well guys i hope you like the video and it's useful for you if you like the channel, consider to subscribe and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you would like as well to join this care collapse, please contact Nina from Ninja Orchids. Uh, her contact details from her channel will be down below or also message me. And again, if you have any comment, question or even want to know where I got my Maxillaria variabilis, uh, you can also drop me a comment and I can of course let you know. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.